<laughs> How's everybody doing? <laughs> well, again, um, you know, I'm dealing with, you know, nurturing my partner to good health, you know, dealing with that and running the building and running my company and school and all that stuff. Ale, Alex Rodriguez, uh, you bought, you spent a thousand dollars on my video classes and plus your birth chart. Alejandro Rodriguez, uh, my man, a Gemini, a most fascinating man. Uh, your videos are coming. We we'll begin in the morning disseminating your videos two at a time, two at a time, two at a time for four days or per week. And I have another set of books for you, Mr. Rodriguez. Alex Rodriguez, I have a library of books for you, totally for free. And you know why? Wow, you've been patient and generous. Okay, I got that for you, Mr. Rodriguez. Okay. We are beginning today with the last of the uh, Ascendant series. We are doing the mutable signs, Sagittarius, Gemini, Pisces, and Virgo. <laughs> Thank you for, I have gotten no donations. I've got no donation. And I know times are hard, things are slow, work is slow, lunch is long. I understand all of that, you know. But I understand that I have multiple, you know. Uh, but I will tell you this, though. I will be going back to D.C. in two weeks. And I'll be staying for the weekend, and I'm going to align myself with a hotel in downtown D.C. So those of you who are interested in getting readings, you guys can get readings from me while I'm in D.C. in two weeks. And on the 29th of January, I will be in the city of Detroit for seven days. I will be doing another astrocon in that city. So my manager and my publicist, Daniel Henry, my manager, uh, Corinda Green, you know, is they're setting all that up. So on the 29th of January, I will be in the city of Detroit doing a conference, AstroCon, for three hours. It will be $35 a pop. So I'll be informing you more about that as the date appears and approaches. I will be doing it in a hotel. And for those of you who want to fly in and stay at the hotel while I do this conference, you're welcome to do so. I am my publicist and my manager will have all that information as we get closer and closer to that day. It's $35 and it's not a lot of money for three hours. You're going to get a lot. I will be there. So hopefully I'm going to book the room for over 200 people. So let's make this happen, guys. Astrocon, January 29th, in the city of Detroit. So I'm coming for you, Detroit, the state of Michigan. I'm coming for you. <laughs> okay. Let's start with Sagittarius and the Ascendant. The Don Juan. <laughs> Mutable Fire. <laughs> Again, my Tito Rodriguez and my delicious gin. And you know me, I don't drink gin. I don't. I, I love gin, but I don't drink it often. A gin, a dirty, a dirty gin martini. So you know, this is going to be a good closing to the series. But this is a reprieve because before I talk about Sagittarius and Virgo and Gemini and Pisces, let me talk about the importance of the mutable signs. You think that. That the cardinal signs are the movers and shakers? They are. They may very well be. And the fixed signs are the scaffolding that keeps the zodiac together and the solar system intact for the demiurge and archons to rule. Now, let me tell you the functions of the mutable cross. But first, let's have a drink. <laughs> Let's have a drink as I listen to my Tito, right? <laughs> a 
and my spliff. <coughs> okay. You have to understand that the mutable signs are the chameleons and the shapeshifters of the zodiac. And having said that, they are also the difference between the cardinal, mutable, and fixed cross is that if you are born on a fixed on a mutable cross, that is having Sagittarius on the Ascendant, or Gemini, or Pisces, or Virgo, then you have the power to function either as a fixed sign or as a cardinal sign. And if you were to choose to function in neither modality of cardinal or fixed, you will be the one that will be the glue or the oil to make anything and everything work. You are the fluid essence that facilitates progress and evolution. The mutable cross. The mutable cross allows you to morph from one state of modality, which could be fixed or could be cardinal, into another state of modality, which can also be fixed or can also be cardinal. So, if you have uh, a cardinal, a, 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 if you have a cardinal sign on the ascendant. You are compelled by impulses and urges and stirnings and yearnings coming from within your soul to act. You are not to stand still if you have a cardinal cross. You are here to act and act you must. But if you are born with a fixed cross, you are not here to act. You don't know yourself enough to get into a platform where you can do for others. Before you can do for others, you need to know who you are and do for you and nurture you. And once you get to the level where you know yourself, could to thy own self be true. From there, you know who you are and what you're here to do. And then it is from there, in the next incarnation, that you are born into a cardinal cross where what you learn in the fixed cross about yourself and have actualized and individuated yourself to the optimum level of self-actualization and self-evolution that you can reach as an individual. Then now, the next phase is to Focus on the next person or the not self, the other. So now the best of you, which you have developed for many, many, many lifetimes, now reaches the same point of culmination where now you cannot advance or develop any further concerning self individuality and self development. So when you reach that level, that plateau of development, of self development, then your focus should be a consolidation of that self-development, knowing who you are, and then using the best of who you are to offer something of service to your fellow human being. And that occurs when you are born with the cardinal cross. Ah, that beat, that beat, you all know that beat. <laughs> I'm already on the air. It takes off and I, oh, forget it. <laughs> I'm already on the air. <laughs> the cardinal cross. The movers and shakers of the zodiac. <laughs> so understand that the fixed signs are here to learn and discover who they are. And when they reach that nirvana within their own soul, they can then move towards doing, doing something for their fellow human being. 
but the fixed the the mutable cross is if you're born a mutable cross, you're actually more powerful than the cardinal cross and the fixed cross. Because being born in the mutable cross allows you the ability to act and become like a chameleon and morph and transmute and shape shift according to the dictates of the culture and race that you are moving through. And each mutable sign has a specific function as to how they bring about across this functional modality of the mutable cross. Okay? So, we are going to begin with Sagittarius. Sagittarius is here to educate. And through the process of educating, he sets or plants or implants the germinal seed in which a spawning of fresh ideas, new ideas, will sprout. And that sprout will become the bedrock of the newfound philosophy that will shape that race or that culture or that community or that neighborhood or that individual when you have Sagittarius and the Ascendant. They are the educators of the Zodiac. They bring high philosophy to the table. It is Jupiter bringing his wisdom to the masses so that we can continue to evolve and eventually reach the level where we can become gods ourselves. Sagittarius and the Ascendant. Duboka. <laughs> Sagittarius and the Ascendant. Now, the the opposite. Oh, come on, stop it. The opposite polarity of Sagittarius is Gemini, right? Ah. Oh. Stop it. It's Gemini. Gemini and the Ascendant, which is the opposite polarity of Sagittarius, is not so much concerned with educating the masses. <clears throat> Even though it still educates by default, Gemini's primal objective is not to educate you. That's the job of Sagittarius. And to a certain degree, Virgo and Pisces. But we're going to talk about them and their modality of imparting knowledge to help advance the race, the human condition. With Gemini, the modality or the mutable modality of Gemini is to present variety, multiplicity of choices. And to those varieties and multiplicity of choices, you choose one that functions best for you, that fits your philosophy, your pathos, your work ethics, your morals and scruples. Because remember, Sagittarius rules high morality, ethics, philosophy, and the foundational virtues of rightful action by acting with love and wisdom. This is the high virtue of Sagittarius and the Ascendant. Okay. The Don Juan of the Zodiac, the ultimate gigolo. The gigolo begins in Virgo, but it reaches culmination in Sagittarius, the Don Juan of the Zodiac, who goes out 
and educates and liberates through education and helps advance the human condition before we reach the initiation in Capricorn, the 10th sign, the sign of initiation, the devil. So Sagittarius, which is the angel, while the devil, Capricorn, is Satan. There's a compromise of these two cardinal immutable forces which brings humanity to its knees. And Capricorn rules the knees, mind you. So, with Gemini and the Ascendant, you are given a variety of choices and which would be the German sea that will develop your own philosophy of life. Gemini is also, like Sagittarius, a truth seeker. But Gemini is not concerned with the ultimate truth of things. Gemini is concerned with a variety of the same truth. Or different truths as it pertains to different realities of existence. Gemini is not made up or constructed to follow a distinct philosophy outside of its own philosophy. And the philosophy of Gemini is to have as much varieties of the truth as possible. Because truth is relative. Your truth doesn't have to be my truth. Truth is, is relative. And Gemini, as well as Sagittarius, knows that. Your truth doesn't have to be my truth. I'm an astrologer, and I die and believe in astrology, but that doesn't mean that you have to believe it, or that it has to be your truth. Because truth, at the end of the day, is relative. Gemini, and the Ascendant. <laughs> oh, see, my archives, really? Really? That's, that, that's my good gen, too. It's Bombay. Bombay. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, now, um, let's discuss now. Virgo, the American Gigolo. And the movie, The American Gigolo, played by Richard Gere, who is himself a Virgo. And boy, did he play the shit on that role. That role was made for him. Because ain't no gigolo and shyster and sexy seducer like Virgo and the Ascendant. Mutable Earth. Sensual. As sensual and as sexual as Capricorn. And as voluptuously smoldering and impacting. The sex can be so healing through Virgo as much as it is through Taurus. The three Earth signs. Each earth sign has a way of presenting love and sensuality because that does belong to us, earth signs, while sexuality belongs to the water signs. Virgo and the Ascendant is also concerned with intelligence, with advancement of the races, along with Gemini and Sagittarius. But Virgo is a mixed bag. Virgo represents number five, the pentagram. So Virgo is not as virtuous or as scrupulous as Sagittarius. Virgo gets dirty, can be a liar, a thief, can be wicked, can be perverse, decadent, but healing, revealing, and transformative. Pulling from the opposite polarity of Pisces. Virgo and the Ascendant can be a little bit demonic and diabolical, definitely sensual, 
and deeply insidious and paradoxical in nature. Virgo, like Gemini, its brother, because we're ruled by both Mercury, can be, and the higher active of Mercury is Uranus. So Virgo can be as complex and as paradoxical as the other mutable signs. Because the motivation of Virgo is never known. And this is true when we're pulling from the opposite polarity of Pisces. So understand that Virgo has a moral structure that is not based on the consensus of society. Virgo makes his own rules or her own rules. And they don't have to be along the lines of morality. Virgo can be quite perverse and decadent and downright evil and sensuous and nasty and all that and be perfectly fine with it. But Virgo, being a mutable earth, can swing to the other side of the pendulum and be just as saintly hearted and such as devoted to virtue as Mother Teresa. Again, pulling from Pisces, the sign of renunciation and redemption and surrender. And having said that, now let's talk about Pisces and the Ascendant. Oh my God, I'm almost gone. I almost got to re-up, but I ain't going to re-up. I don't got time to re-up. Understand that with Pisces and the Ascendant, she's the mirror. She reflects the evil and darkness that you have inside you. But she can also reflect, in that same respect, the beauty of God within you. She or he will mirror and mimic the inner darkness of your own personality. And even those parts within you that you don't even know are there. The Pisces Ascendant demands that you see yourself in total, unadulterated form, regardless of the pain that it may cause you. Because by watching and looking at yourself through the eyes of others in plain truth can cause healing and a form of transformation that could not occur on your own. So Pisces is the eternal rescuer. When there's no one else to be there for you and for you to reach a hand to help you and to pull you through, Pisces will be that hand that will come out of the cosmos even, out of nowhere, and pull you into safety. Because even if you are a rapist, a murderer, a child molester, you still have the divine spark of God in you. And therefore, because you have that in you, there is worthiness of just of that alone for you to be saved, redeemed, and forgiven. Pisces symbolizes ultimate forgiveness, ultimate surrender, and ultimate renunciation. The ego is completely dead here and has no room for the spiritual journey that's about to occur when we reach the last sign of the zodiac, Pisces. We are, our, we are at our end of our rope. There is no going back or turning back when we go into Pisces. Here, the ego loses itself and it meshes into the ultimate source of the creator, whatever that is until it re-coalesces and reincarnates into another personality, an ego. And we start the journey of the soul encapsulated through the ego and personality in carbon matter. And here we go again, going through the same soap opera of life that is played and destined and cursed even to the perpetual real wheel of rebirth. And these are the principles of the mutable science, and we are done with this introduction.